Hey, so what's going on everybody? So I just realized I have four subscribers, so that's pretty cool. Um, a little background on this stuff. Uh, my little sister is in high school right now, still in her junior year, but she really wants to be a mechanical engineer, so I kind of wanted to make some videos for her um, because I figured, what, four years from now when she's taking these classes, I'm not going to be able to help her. All this stuff uh, has pretty much uh, gone through my head. So I am... A recent graduate, May 2021, um, I work for a large defense contractor as a mechanical engineer. And I mean, that's kind of the point of these videos. Um, normally, when I was taking these courses, um, I was pretty good at uh, all this fluid stuff. So, well, I mean, just a lot of ME courses. And I just really hope that she doesn't come across any issues, make sure she understands all these problems. You know, the basics, these are pretty common problems. She'll... Um, kind of encounter um but yeah let's go ahead and get started on this problem so it's it reads water um assumed inviscid and incompressible flows steadily in the vertical variable area pipe and we got to determine the flow rate if the pressure in each of the gauges reads 50 kilopascals so let's go ahead and get started All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So this one, we're dealing with water. So that's cool, right? We know the density, let me write gnomes. Density of water, we know that is, what is this, kilopascal? So that will be 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. And we know both pressures, right? 50 kilopascal so that's cool let's see 50,000 newton per meter squared all right pressure same thing for p2 50,000 newton per meter squared all right cool so we got a point here right right at this gauge reading we got a point here at this gauge reading and we're trying to find the flow rate so we know we make the two points right here because this is where we have our knowns. So we got pressure. Um, we don't know the velocity here. But we don't know the velocity here. But we got both pressures. We know the height. Putting it here um, pretty much just screws us, right? We don't know velocity. We don't know height. We don't know pressure. So it's too many unknowns. That's why um, it's pretty easy to determine where your points will be. In this case, it's just here and here. But... That's kind of the trick to these problems. You just gotta be creative. Where do you know the values and all that good stuff? So let's go ahead and start with the Bernoulli equation. All right, Bernoulli. So we know that, right? It's P1 plus one half rho V1 squared plus rho GH. Now, like I said, um, there's a ton of versions. I think there's maybe three or four. I can't remember. But I like to stick to this one. It's real easy to get confused. <clears throat> um, well, I mean, the reason I stick to this one is just because it's easier to me. I don't know. But I suggest you choose one and get used to it because if you ever do confuse two equations, that's going to mess you up. But at the end of the day, all, all your units should be consistent. So newtons per meter squared on each one. That's how you know. Uh, P2 plus one half rho V2 squared plus rho GH of two. Cool. So we know P1 and P2 since they're the same number that we just cancel them out, right? So that's easy. Um, what else? We know we don't know velocity, so we can't cancel this term. So, all right, that's right, the datum line. So before we start canceling more, let's go ahead and set a reference point. So I'm going to go ahead and set it right here. This is going to be our datum line. That's what they call it. Um, it's just a reference point. So at this point right here, height is zero. And you could choose it here too. Um, technically, it'd be better to choose it here to not deal with negatives because now this height it's a negative 10. It's not just 10. We're negative 10 away from the reference. So just keep that in mind. Wherever you choose it, make sure you include negative and positive heights. So in this case, this point one, this is point two. 
So height one is zero, right? Because we're on the datum. Make sure that makes sense, okay? Um, so we don't know H, no, I'm sorry, we know H, we don't know V2, we don't know V1. It's asking for a flow rate. So flow rate, you know it's Q is equal to AV. And because of continuity, the flow rate here is the same as the flow rate here. So all we have to do is find one velocity. It doesn't matter which one, because we know the area for both, right? This is one meter in diameter, two meters in diameter. We could get the area, pi r squared, pi d squared over four, whichever one you want to use. Um, so yeah, uh, let's go ahead and simplify this equation right here. One half rho v1 squared is equal to one half rho v2 squared plus rho g h2. So that's our new equation right there. Um, we could get rid of the rho in each one, density in each one. Uh, let's multiply everything by two to get um, rid of these fractions. So you'll have v1 squared, right? Because got rid of the rho, multiplied everything by two is equal to v2 squared plus 2gh2. Cool. So that's the equation we got right here. Um, let me go ahead and cloud that up because we will need it later. So again, the mission here is to find velocity. Doesn't matter which one, just one of the velocities to get flow rate, right? Um, so what we do next, we do know because of continuity, Q1 is equal to Q2, right? The flow rate here is equal to flow rate here. So let's go ahead and set them equal to each other. We got A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2, right? Um, that means pi r1 squared um, is equal to pi r2 squared. Oh, I'm sorry, and the velocity. Oh, shit. Let me go ahead and rewrite this. So it's the area, right? V1 is equal to pi r2 squared v2. Um, pi's cancel out. Let me go ahead and write, continue over here. So pi's cancel out. We're stuck with r1 squared v1 is equal to r2 squared v2. We know the numbers for a radius. So let's go ahead and plug that in. The radius at point one is one squared, right? Radius squared times v1. And that is equal to 0 0.5 squared v2. Continuing it, let's see. We got v1 is equal to, this is 0 0.25. So that's the same as 1 fourth v2. And because I hate fractions, we are going to have v2 is equal to 4 v1. So what this means, you could use any of these two. I just prefer no fractions. But now for every V2 we see in this equation up here, we're going to plug in 4V1. So thankfully, it only comes up once right here. So step four, plug in, right? So we got V1 squared is equal to 4V1, parentheses, right? Don't get confused squared plus 2gh2 at point two. Okay, so we got, cool, gets easier, right? V1 squared is equal to 16v1 squared plus 2gh2. Now, Let's move V1 squared on one side, keep that term over there. We will have, what is that? Let me just continue here to save space. I don't know how much I'll need. But we'll have negative 15 V1 squared 
Now, you're probably seeing a negative and you're tripping out, but like I said, everything should work itself out at the end. So, uh, we know H2. Um, I'm going to go ahead and right now. I'll just keep it like that. That's fine. So, we got negative 15. Let's start plugging in some numbers. V1 squared. Or should we? Mm, not yet. Hold on. We'll leave it like that. We'll bubble that one. So this is our equation. Now, since we have two, well, we have everything, right? Um, yeah, we actually have everything, so we can actually keep it going. So we'll just do a new step, step five. Uh, we got negative 15 V1 squared is equal to two times 9.81. And again, we're 10 meters under the datum. So that means this is a negative 10. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna include the units. If you do the math here, you will get V1 is equal to 3.62 meters per second. So that's V1. Now we need the flow rate. So we can use this V1, plug it into Q equals AV, right? Q is equal to Q1 is equal to A1, V1. So finally, the last step, Q1 is equal to A1, V1. The area at 0.1, I'm not sure you can see that, but right there. That is equal to pi r squared, pi radius is one. Again, radius is one, you're not using diameter. 1, what else? Pi r squared times 3.62. Cool, so that should be Q1 is equal to 11.36 meters cubed per second. So is the answer. Let me move it up just in case you can't see it, but that's the answer right there. Okay, now, Something I wanted to mention, if you did the reference right here, at this point, point 0.2, that means H1 would have equaled 10 meters and H2 would have been zero. So this term would have canceled out, not this one. Now, if you did that, if you go to which equation? This equation right here, this 2GH2 would have been plus 2GH1 over here. And you would have had... <clears throat> If you did that, right, in this equation, you would have had 2GH1, since it's on this side now, is equal to 15V1, not a negative 15. And your velocity should have been the same. So I guess what I'm trying to tell you is, at the end of the day, use logic. Because if you get a negative velocity, you did something wrong. Just FYI at this step. Um, yeah, at the end of the day, you should have no negatives. Your heights could be negative depending where you choose your datum, but that's kind of a way to check your answers. So just be careful when you take the exam and see some weird stuff like that. But yeah, that's the answer right there, 11.36.